Alhamdulillah Hirabil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam Ala Nabi and Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam in mabad In Islam The manners The way we treat people The way we interact with people Is Very very important That we have good manners That we relate to one another In a righteous and positive way and that we're respectful of one another's. In Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu all throughout his authentic sunnah, alayhi salatu wasalam, emphasized having good manners and good moral character and good conduct, alayhi salatu wasalam. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ma min shayin athkulu fi meizan al-mu'min yawm al-qiyamah min husn al-khuk wa inna allaha yubghidu al-fahish al the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said He said there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good conduct. And verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. In this hadith, the ulama have expo spoken and explained extensively about the importance of manners. Because it's all throughout the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. And that's why in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, the mother of the believer, she said, خُلُقُهُ Quran. She said about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that his manners were the Quran. If you want to know the manners of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, read Kitab Allah, the Kalam of Allah, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you'll know how the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam was. That shows us we need to practice what we read. We need to read the Quran, memorize the Quran, what we can, and practice. If we want to follow the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, getting back to the Hadith at hand, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasallam, said that there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer on the Day of Judgment, letting us know that Yom al Qiyamah are deeds. This hadith makes it affirms for us that our deeds will be weighed on the day of judgment. That if you and and as is in conjunction with the ayah, what's the ayah in Surah Zilzalaha, Zilzalaha about the woman uh, khafat? Uh huh. Kuhufi. No. Huh? Kuhufi. Isha. Okay. So whoever's scale is heavy. Then they will be, you know, the person whose scale is heavy with good deeds, then they will be rewarded immensely. By letting us know that the scale of good deeds, that affirms for us there is a scale on the Day of Judgment. We're going to be judged with how we dealt with one another. Also in this hadith, it illustrates for us the importance of interacting with one another in, in, in righteousness. And that if we want to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which we've been ordered to do, we've been ordered to follow Allah and follow the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, yalla, keep moving, then we have to have good conduct. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam affirmed for us that we have to follow his sunnah. Qala alayhi salatu wasalam, alaykum bi sunnati. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, It is upon you my sunnah. Follow my sunnah. So follow the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and of his way from amongst the things that he contained in his uh, beautiful character is good manners, and that's going to be heavy on our scale. What does good manners consist of? Good manners consist of bitter waladin, being obedient and righteous to your parents, listening to your mother. Don't talk back to your mother. Don't look bad at your mother. Uh, Looking and respecting your father the same. And when the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the rights of the mother and father, the Prophet ﷺ, the man said, uh, you know, asked about the 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 right and the and the rights of the, the parents. And the man, uh, the Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, ﷺ, that it's your mother. And then he said, Thumma, Thumma men, your mother, then who? Your mother, three times the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized the mother. That's why your mother has big rights over you. Immense rights. Always be respectful of your mother. 
and always serve your mother, as well as your father. Both. But especially the mother. Especially the mother. From other ways in which we can have righteous parents, because sometimes, unfortunately, our parents... Yella, keep moving. Unfortunately, our, uh, sometimes the parents are separated. So sometimes we have stepfathers and stepmothers. Again, they have rights over us. We have to be respectful. We have to listen to them. We can't do what we want to do, especially as children. And even as adults, we should be respectful, kind, serve them, listen to them, be obedient to their commands, whatever they order us to do in righteousness. And another important thing is how we deal with one another. Are we fighting one another? Are we arguing with one another? Are we disrespecting, uh, for example, our elders and our teachers? We must be respectful to our teachers. We must not look hard at your teachers. You must not, not curse your teachers and speak ill of your teachers. Your teachers also have a level of respect. Just as when you get older and you begin to study Allah with the scholars of Islam, they have a, a great manzil because Allah loves them. Allah loves them. Why? Because they're the people who fear Allah the most. They have the most taqwa, those scholars that are of righteousness. Scholars of righteousness, those that are on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they're practicing, they are the people who fear Allah most. And that's why Allah says, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala fi Kitab al Karim, akhsha al ibadi al ulama. The, the most God fearing. Of my servants is the ulama, is the scholars. That's why we have to also be respectful of them. So be respectful of your teacher. If you have a teacher that teaches you Quran, listen to them. Do not give them lip. Do not disrespect them. Do not curse them. Do not even look hard at them. All of those things are contained in that hadith of being having good manners. In addition to that, in addition to having uh, those good manners, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also mentioned Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. So he said, Ma min shayin atkulu fi meizan mu'min yom al-qiyamah min husn al-khulq wa inna allaha yubghidu al-fayish al -badi. So the last part of the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and verily Allah hates sinful, wicked speech. Inna allaha yubghidu Bughd, from the word bughd in Arabic, which means hatred. It means, you know, a, a, a dislike, immense dislike. Verily, Allah hates what? What does Allah hate, Abdurrahim? Huh? What does Allah hate? Inna Allah yubghidu al-fahish al-bidi. Verily, Allah hates wicked speech. So cursing people, disrespecting people with your tongue, Speaking in an ill fashion, cursing people, and general disrespect, and uh, that that comes from from bad speech. This is why the believer has those characteristics of having good manners, good moral conduct, and being respectful in their speech. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and put this on our scale of hasana, of good deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to practice what we preach and be good to our parents, good to our teachers, and respectful of our ulama, and respectful of the leaders of the Muslims, and be respectful of one another, Muslim and non-Muslim. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.